Hi, I've got my blue behind me because we're going to green screen in a second because I have to show you. There's just the ravenous mental illness that rotted my brain. Basically, what we're going to do is I have created a detailed historical timeline of all of the drama that happened in One Direction. I've been a One Direction fan since I think 2011. I was a Louie girl, so unpack that. Unpack that. There's a lot there. But yeah, I just want to talk about the truly unhinged, vile shit that every tween on Twitter and Tumblr was exposed to. It's my favorite fucking thing in the entire world. I think we should just get into it. Quick ad break. And then let's get into the real shit. Class is in session, bitch. I thought we'd just take a quick break, soak up some sun, and talk about this week's sponsor, Dipsy. As we're finally kind of exiting the horrible, horrible time in winter that is January and February, I think it's a great time to check in with yourself and kind of what you want this year to be. You know, it's important to me to rest when I need rest, make sure that I'm helping and supporting myself. Move you move you and say yes to more things that bring me pleasure and joy and with dipsy you can transport your mind to another world where you can relax and treat yourself to your deepest desires dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short sexy stories written by women for women they bring scenarios to life with creative soundscapes and realistic characters if stories about second chance romance vacation chance encounters Hot and heavy hookups. There's something for everyone. Dipsy, of course, is inclusive. There are stories for queer people, straight people. Everybody deserves to feel like pleasure is for them and not feel excluded. And 56% of their stories are voice acted by people of color. Also, new content is released every week. So in between listening to your favorite stories over and over again, you can always find something new, something perfect for the mood you're in. So go ahead, let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. So if you go to the link in my bio or go to dipsystories.com slash uncarly, you get an extended 30 day free trial. Again, that is D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash uncarly <coughs> for 30 days of full access for free. Again, dipsystories.com slash uncarly. Thank you so much to Dipsy for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. Sorry, this is some Unabomber shit. I hate that I did it. I hate that it's my work. Like the mental illness emanating off of this graphic it's good no it's good <laughs> so we're just gonna go through year by year and break down some of the most iconic moments in one direction history i am the professor class is in session like i know we're not burning witches anymore but i feel like if we were this would be witch offense like this is witch level right so it's 2011 a great year for culture for time rolling in the deep is at the top of the charts beyonce announced having a baby. We're feeling good. Obama is the president. Is Obama the president in 2011? Yes, 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 yes. I'm Canadian. We're gonna start off the One Direction drama in this year. One Direction didn't form in 2011, but I feel like that's when we really get the canon messy drama moments. So we're gonna start off with the iconic hashtag let Niall sing. Look at this half-baked graphic. That was the filter, the Paris ass looking Instagram filter everybody put on every photo. People reposted this graphic specifically. It's burned in the back of my mind and just washed it out to all shit using the in-app Instagram filters. So hashtag let Niall sing. There's a couple layers to this. This graphic seems to be referring to the fact that they're going to cut Niall out of Torn, which is like the song that the guys on X Factor sang. If you ever rewatch any One Direction X Factor performance, it's always so firmly mid or bad. They are the epitome of men failing upwards because they do become incredibly successful, but you watch those videos and you're like, Simon girl, what did you see? There was lots of rumors. Were any of these confirmed? Absolutely not. The One Direction, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, rumor mill was rife with misinformation, fake news, if you will. But they kept being like, Niall is going to be cut from the band and he can't sing. That's what management is saying. There's a lot of vilification of the 
management, which has yet to be confirmed or denied, but it was like, they were not going to let Niall sing. So we have to do hashtag let Niall sing to show Niall our support so he can sing. What I remember from this time was the narrative that management was turning Niall's mic down in live performances. Is this true or not? I can't imagine so because fucking why? He's paid to be there. As an adult, this just doesn't make any fucking sense to me. They were saying that like management was turning Niall's mic down because they didn't like Niall as much as they liked Harry and Zayn and all that shit. So they turned his microphone down so you can't hear him. As an adult, I just don't even understand. This doesn't make any sense. Nobody's showing up to a One Direction concert for stellar vocal performances. Also, you could fully let him lip sync. It makes no fucking sense. This was like our personal like Vietnam War in the sense that directioners were like protesting Niall not being allowed to sing. The rest of 2011 was a fairly uneventful year. I just was looking back through old One Direction tweets to see if they said anything problematic or controversial and I found this one and it made me laugh. June 21st, 2011 at Niall Official says, it's Niall, bitch. Ha ha, that's art, that's art, that's art. Andy Warhol, take fucking notes. Then we're getting into 2012. Things are heating up in the One Direction universe, the multiverse of madness. They're getting more famous. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. So first we had Mr. X. As with all of these kind of inner fandom One Direction dramas that happen, I'm gonna sound like I'm having a mental break explaining it to you. You're gonna say that makes no sense and I'm like yes babe I know it makes no sense but we believed it wholeheartedly. So Mr. X started out as a Twitter account that would post like One Direction predictions which were basically they were saying like fortunes like they were seeing the future and a couple of them came true I guess so people were like oh fuck. <laughs> I don't know why this matters. I just don't even understand why that was scary. But at the time we were like, oh my God, a magical being is predicting the future of One Direction. This is bad. Then Mr. X said that Harry was going to die. So everyone's like, fuck. But then Mr. X also said that they were gonna bring a gun to Madison Square Garden to kill Harry. So you're not much of a fortune teller if you're creating their universe. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be like a fortune teller and be like, let me predict the future. You're gonna fall down. And then I push them to the ground. So Mr. X said, this is Mr. X. Say goodbye to your precious One Direction. The storm is coming. Four will stay as one will fall. And basically everyone was doing hashtag stay safe Harry so that Harry didn't get gunned down on Madison Square Garden. And that's pretty scary. Now knowing that that didn't happen, it's just insane. Cause surely it was just like a mentally ill nine year old behind the keys of their family computer whipping up a frenzy. Like who is Mr. X? Where are they now? I wanna know. Next 2012 drama is of course the one Wanted versus One Direction drama. The Wanted was another boy band coming out of the UK and they were kind of more like older, edgier. So they started to fight with One Direction or One Direction started to fight with them. It doesn't matter. This is all so deeply inconsequential. You know, it's like people are dying. So what happened was the fight first started out between Zayn and Max of The Wanted. And basically it was them going back and forth, calling each other posers. Zayn from One Direction would be kind of like, you're not that famous. You're talking about us to stay famous. You're a poser. And then Max from The Wanted would then be like, your fans are all 11 year old girls. You're not a bad boy at all. You, you say that you're the bad boy from Bradford, but you're not Zayn, of course, clapped back with the iconic tweet, all right, chlamydia boy. I would delete my Twitter account if somebody said that to me. But the fight continued later with Louie. There was a bunch of insane tweets. This was back before like a social media manager was really a thing. So every celebrity was just rawing it on their Twitter. There was another guy called Tom Parker from The Wanted. And he'd said, you even talk about us at your own gig. Are you that upset you didn't get into the band? To which Louis replied, we both know I wouldn't waste time auditioning for your band. You humor me with your bad boy persona. Bad boys for life, my idol. Then Tom Parker said, you were too busy working the judges with this and then posted Louis' X Factor audition. My name's Louis Tomlinson. Off you go. Oh, it's what you do to me. Oh, it's what you do to me. 
And then Louis responded with an article about how Tom from The Wanted auditioned for The X Factor and didn't make it at all. So, you know, bodies were dropping. Zane also said, mate, if I had a face like yours, my hair would be the last thing I'd worry about. It was so messy. For, fu for what? For why? For why? And then, of course, we have the Haler outing. Harry Styles and Taylor Swift were spotted walking on a date in Central Park in NYC. You're welcome for that. Here's the thing about Haler that really fucks with my mind. If you are familiar with any kind of like fandom activity on the internet, you'll know that anytime any famous person gets in a relationship with another famous person, everyone's like, that's a PR relationship. So I literally went through my whole life thinking that Harry Styles and Taylor Swift dating was a PR relationship because I just accepted it as fact because I was like not a fully developed human at the time. Like I wasn't like I was on the front lines of the Haler debate. I just picked up from like Twitter and Tumblr or whatever that it was PR and I just accepted it because I thought that that was true. Through doing this, I'm kind of like reflected and been like, there's no proof of that in any way. I mean, anytime a celebrity is like photographed by the paparazzi, I'm like, because mm. so many celebrities are just like never photographed by the paparazzi on dates ever. Like just don't go on a walk. Also like, Harry, you're a teenage millionaire. Like take her to dinner. Why are you walking? Why is your first date walking, babe? You're rich. Can't go to a movie. This was really still at the very beginning of like Taylor Swift writes about all her exes. She dates a lot of guys and is therefore a slut and and being a slut is bad. Like that weird 1950s narrative. So like when she was dating Harry Styles, they were like, he's fucked. We need to save my precious baby boy from this witch. That was bad for sure. They ended up breaking up pretty shortly afterwards. He was the inspiration for a shit ton of her music on her album 1989, which by the way, when 1989 Taylor's version comes out, I am not liable for the annoying person I become. She wrote style about him. It's rumored that Out of the Woods is written about him. There's also in this album a million different allusions to Harry Styles being a horrible driver, which bred the conspiracy theory that Harry Styles hit someone with his car while Taylor Swift was in the passenger seat. They did a hit and run. The lyrics in Out of the Woods, remember when you hit the brakes too soon, 20 stitches in the hospital room. I think that's it. It's not like real, but it's fucking funny. Moving on to 2013. There's really only one giant drama from this year, and it is my favorite because it involves local school. Ed Sheeran. So Ed Sheeran at this time was dating Ellie Goulding. Ellie Goulding is not really around anymore, but she was kind of like a Charlie XCX adjacent pop girly of the early 2010s. They were kind of seeing each other. They were spotted together at fashion events or whatever. To this day, Ellie Goulding holds that they were just friends, like flirty friends. They were not dating. Ed Sheeran wrote a song called Friends, where it's basically like, friends don't treat each other this way. We're not friends. Messy from top to bottom. You guys are full adults. Have a single conversation about what you are to each other. I'm begging you. While they were all staying at the same hotel, Ellie Goulding hooked up with Niall Horan, blonde baby angel king, Niall Horan, while she was with Ed Sheeran. So he wrote the song Don't about this. It's, it's a bop, like, it's a bop. It's incredibly mean. It's so funny, it's about Niall. Also, you will see as we go continue to go through this that there is a trend where basically after 2013, Niall is not involved in any drama. Niall and Harry are rarely involved in drama. Um, it's almost always Louis and Zayn. And, and Liam later. Whenever Liam gets into drama, it's like flop. It's really embarrassing. But this is like basically the last we're gonna hear of like intense Niall drama because he's just kind of minding his own business now. Then we're gonna go to 2014. In 2014, a video was leaked, filmed presumably by Louis Tomlinson when him and Zayn are smoking weed while on tour. This was Directioner's World War III. We could not fathom that a teenage to early 20 something millionaire was smoking weed. The culture that I was raised in kind of alluded to me that smoking weed was the same thing as doing crack. All all drugs are a slippery slope. If you take one hit of a bong, you're gonna be searching for black tar heroin. So when they smoked weed, I was like, they're an addict. They can't help it. They're addicted to weed because life on the road is too hard. Like I thought that this was some Jim Morrison. I don't know, I, this was bad for me. Now looking back, it's so funny because of course, they're going on tour. They've never had a normal life, but they can't even basically like leave their hotel rooms. Like they just travel around the world, but they're too famous to leave. And I didn't think they were smoking weed. If this was me, I would be high every second of my life. There's no other option. A portion of the fandom was like, yeah, that checks out. Another portion was like, I am going to burn my One Direction tickets. 
My favorite hashtag to come out of this was hashtag Nile raised $300,000 for charity right about that, which is already too long. It's too long of a hashtag. But everyone was like, it's funny. The media is against One Direction. Actually, actually, they're against them because they're writing about when Zayn and Louis smoke weed, okay? <laughs> but the funny thing is they're not writing about how Nile raised $300,000 for charity. The delusion of that, I'm obsessed with that. If I get criticized literally once, my response is gonna be like, that's funny. No, it's actually funny. It's funny because I actually volunteer and you're not talking about all the volunteer work I'm doing. You're just getting mad at me for doing a hit and run. Then of course, also in 2014, we have Liam Payne speaking out in support of a member of Duck Dynasty. A member of Duck Dynasty said some homophobic remarks Um, because of course, is anyone surprised about that? Literally the least surprising thing in the entire world. And Liam was like, hey man, mad respect for supporting family values. And everyone was like, bitch, what are you fucking talking about? He's like, no, I just mean Christi Christianity. The beginning of the Liam Payne glow down era. 2015 is when things really start to heat up for drama because 2015 is the year that Zayn Malik left One Direction. The shot heard around the world. This was Pearl Harbor for affluent white women. Zayn left One Direction and people acted like a natural disaster had hit. People acted like the president was assassinated. Let's be real. I sadly dealt with and deal with the chronic pain that comes with One Direction infection. I was sad. One Direction stayed together. Zayn left to pursue a solo project. It's been revealed since then that Zayn left without saying goodbye. I think that came from Liam Payne though, who has been messy since this and kind of constantly making remarks about Zayn, baiting him in a way that I think is really suspect and weird. Like since the year 2015, Zayn's name has not left Liam's head. Like he talks about him constantly. So Naughty Boy is a British DJ, record producer, songwriter, and musician. In 2015, Zayn Zane posted a picture with Naughty Boy, this picture, uh, and no, no, Naughty Boy posted it. They took a picture together, but Naughty Boy posted it and said, replace this, basically being like, haha, cheeky. It's a little messy, but being like, don't replace, you can't replace Zane. And fair enough, like Zane, vocally, you need him in that band. And then Louis Tomlinson tweeted, remember when you were 12 and you used to think those MacBook filters for your pictures were cool, haha? Some people still do, ha. Huh? And the naughty boy responded, and some people can't even sing, but who's complaining when there's autotune, eh? Sunglasses emoji. Again, Twitter, the Wild West, celebrities just being so messy to each other. And this was so heartbreaking in the One Direction fandom at the time, because like now there's infighting. It's not just like Zayn left and we can feed ourselves the lies that it's okay and that he just wanted to do his own thing. Also, when you look back at it at this time, Zayn is obviously dealing with a plethora of mental health issues. So I do really feel for him. Later in 2015, Zayn also tweeted, I guess I never really explained why I left. It was for this moment to be given the opportunity to show you who I really am, hashtag real music. And that pissed people off because people were like, One Direction is real music. And like, there's two sides to this, right? Like, I do truly believe that like music made for young women gets such a bad rap. And young women as cultural consumers get treated so shit, even though they are like the number one consumers, they drive the market. If you can appeal to young women, you're set for motherfucking life. And yet they're constantly clowned on. And I think that is bad. At the same time, One Direction did release Act My Age, which is a pirate bop, but horrible. <laughs> We need to respect young women for the cultural consumers they are, but we also don't have to deny the reality that some of the One Direction music was ass. And I ate it up. Like, I ate that ass right up. I sucked that ass down my gullet. <laughs> I apologize for that sentence. You cannot deny that the song, Best Song Ever, feels like what I can only imagine doing narcotics feels like. That song makes me shake my flat ass like it is my last day on God's green earth. Then we enter 2016, the messiest year in One Direction history. We're starting with Conchabar. So Louis announced that him and his girlfriend at the time, um, were pregnant and having a baby. And there was a rumor online that Louis was gonna name his son Conchabar, um, which was the Irish spelling of Connor. Offensive, not only to Irish people, but also dumb as fuck. He did name his son Connor, I believe there was a period in life in which everyone just thought that Louis Tomlinson's child was going to be named Conchabar, and I will refuse to let that fucking die. We must speak that into existence to remember it as a society. Once Louis' son was born, Zayn Malik said in an interview, somebody had talked to him and they were like, oh, Louis' son is born. Are you going to see him? Because you were in One Direction. And Zayn was like, I doubt that. 
I'm gonna get invited. Which is fair, they had a fully public beef just the year before, saddened the fans even more because their the besties from their band are no longer besties. Zayn isn't even gonna meet Louis' son. That's sad. Also, it's worth saying, you know what Larry is, right? If not, click off this video because you are living in blissful ignorance and I refuse to break that for you. Larry Stylinson is the ship name for Louis Tomlinson and Harry Styles. Fans were convinced that they were dating and that management was keeping it a secret and that even to this day, they are still dating. And if you say that doesn't make any sense, why would they be dating in secret when Harry Styles gets constantly called out for queer baiting? Your guess is as good as mine, babe. The way that the Larry brain rot works is that they were convinced that Louis' son was a doll and fake and that management made him have a doll fake son with his girlfriend to hide the fact that him and Harry were together. The way that they explain this away is that he said that my son was born yesterday and they were like, he was actually born two days ago. Because why would the father of a newborn not know exactly what time it is? I can't think of any other reason. Also, this is the point in which One Direction announced that they were taking an extended 18 month hiatus. Still waiting for that comeback, guys. Still waiting for the comeback. When are we getting the One Direction reunion tour? I wanna know. It is worth noting, and I will admit this, um, I did not purchase all of these One Direction tickets, but I did see One Direction four times in concert. And that's my cross to bear. Like imagine like trying to wake up every day and get through life knowing that's true about yourself. Also this year, Zayn won an AMA for his debut solo album, and when he accepted the award, he said, there's only one name on this, right? Which is a funny joke. Moving on to 2017. Harry Styles releases Sign of the Times, his debut single, Time Stops, Time Stops. The world shifts on its axis, just a little bit. Great song, banger. We have to admit it, that song is so good. It's got a great voice. Okay, I need to focus. Liam says it's not his kind of music. This is the beginning of the Liam Payne messy attention-seeking arc in which he kind of just starts trying to, to grasp at relevancy, you know, just try to grasp at it. So somebody asks Zayn to comment on Harry and his new song. And Zayn says, to be honest, I never really spoke to Harry even when I was in the band. So I didn't really expect much of a relationship with him post breakup. Again, just kind of these little swipes at each other that things aren't going well. I don't believe that they didn't speak when they were in the band because like you did spend like probably every day of your life together. I do believe that like you don't want to be friends with the same people you were forced to work with, your co-workers at 16. Moving on to 2018, Zayn releases the song Good Years, which is thought to be about his relationship while he was in One Direction. I'm gonna read you some lyrics. I'd rather be anywhere, anywhere but here. I'd rather be anywhere, anywhere but here. I close my eyes. I see a crowd of a thousand tears. I pray to God I didn't waste all my good years. The voice is screaming loud as hell. We don't care about no one else. Nothing in the world could bring us down. Now we're so high among the stars without a worry and neither one of us wants to say I'm sorry. Too much drugs and alcohol. What the hell were we fighting for? Cause now the whole damn world will know that we're too numb and too dumb to change the story. Neither of us want to say we're sorry. And this pissed Louis off and Louis said, proper confused, what a hypocrite. And I understand that reaction in a way. It's like, just because your experience in One Direction wasn't entirely positive doesn't undo all of the good memories you shared together. But it is obvious Zayn is dealing with a lot of trauma. And also like, he has a right to write about his experiences. I think good writing, you can't be afraid of hurting people's feelings. Um, that's why I love Phoebe Bridgers. She will fully destroy the lives of men and then write about it. And I'm like, yes, girly. 2019, Louis Tomlinson returns to the X Factor. I think at this point he was a judge and his mother had passed away and he wanted to perform in the X Factor kind of like a tribute to her, very moving. All the members of One Direction except for Zayn showed up. This is thought to be like a real severing in their relationship forever because you wanna show up for your friend regardless of your past history. Your friend's mom is dead and he wants you to be there to support him on the X Factor. Like on a lighter note, this is also the year that Liam Payne released bisexual national anthem both ways. This song was put under heavy fire and it's not because he expressed his support in family values years before. It's a song about how he's dating a bisexual woman and she likes it both ways and he kind of just fetishizes that. Let's read some lyrics from that. My girl, she like it both ways. She like the way it all tastes. Couple more, we'll call it foreplay. No, no, I don't discriminate. Bring it back to my place. Yeah, she like it both ways. Girl, I can feel it. Oh, yeah, I can feel what you want. Yeah, like that you're different. Yeah, 
you do what you want. I won't judge. I won't judge. Love in the way that she's turning you on. Switching the lanes like a Bugatti sport. Flipping that body, go head, I go tails. Sharing that body like it's our last meal. That, <laughs> that's a crime. That is so much worse than I even remember it being. <laughs> that's so bad. Okay, nothing happens in 2020 in terms of One Direction drama. I guess the COVID-19 pandemic shut them all up. But 2021 on TikTok, Liam Payne posts a video that's basically saying, POV, the meeting after Zayn quit. Millennial laughing, millennial laughing, millennial laughing. Forgot I had this in drafts. In 2022, Liam Payne goes on the impulsive podcast podcast with Logan Paul and rocks the world, destroys his own career and just spews bullshit for, I don't even know, an hour. He basically alluded to the fact that Harry Styles pushed him up against the wall. And then Liam said back to him, if you don't remove your hands from me, I'll never use them again. But like they got in a physical altercation saying wasn't raised right. He said that he hated Louis in the band and that Louis was like a wild child. He said nothing about Niall. He said that the first song that he released, Strip That Down, had a billion streams and it outsold everyone in the band. Honestly, I'll have what she's having. Can I have that level of delusion? <laughs> like he just talked shit for an hour straight and looked like an ass. It of course spawned the resurgence of this video of him dancing, which haunts my dreams. <laughs> Harry Styles released Harry's House, his third album. He won the Grammy Album of the Year for it. He also won the Album of the Year at the Brit Awards. And at the Brit Awards, he thanked every single member of One Direction. And I just include that because I think it's 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 a nice positive note to end this nightmarish shitstorm on. That's the One Direction drama that I think is uh, of note. If you remember any terrifying, insane moments in One Direction history, you gotta let me know, girls. Thank you so much for watching. All of my links, my Instagram, and all that shit will be in the description below. I'll see you later. Take care of yourself. <laughs>